Well, in about 20 minutes, Stephen Colbert will officially take over the Late Show here on CBS. Sitting down with the funny man in an effort to get to know the real Colbert, one thing really became clear. We may have seen more of the real Stephen all of these years and never knew it. Hey, Southern California. Stephen Colbert may be best known as the conservative pundit for the Colbert Report, a character he played for 10 seasons on Comedy Central. I do not envy whoever they try to put in that chair. Now, Colbert, ready to be himself, ready to take over The Late Show. I really enjoyed working for Comedy Central. They were very nice. Uh, but for many years, there was nothing on except like me, John, and, and uh, South Park. <laughs> Is he going to make an appearance? My old character? Yes. I, I, if we can book him, he is, I don't know if we can afford him. <laughs> You're working for CBS now? Oh, well, my, or CBS, as you call it. CBS. <laughs> CBS. Only CBS. Is it a little more freeing or not, though, to be yourself, as opposed well, to being this character that shows up every day? The most amazing thing is that I, I'm not tired at the end of the interview because mm. I'm just myself. I used to have to run everything through... Uh, you know, an occipital processor back here to make sure I was translating how I felt into the character's voice mm -hmm. to the person I was talking to. Colbert off the air since December of last year is getting back to work, doing what he does best, making people laugh. In June, he launched the Late Show YouTube channel, his series of videos going viral with millions of hits. I'm Stephen Colbert. Welcome to the internet. We took some time off. We took, took about four or five months off from yeah. the show, from the old show, and sort of didn't work. Though it's really hard <laughs> not to because we actually enjoy what we do. Yeah. And then when we got back together, we were, we'd write a material on a certain day, like, you know, if Donald Trump does something. I am pleased to announce that I have an announcement to make. You want to do the joke right away. Yes. You know, I don't want to have to wait. Yeah. You know, people, people keep saying, are you anxious about doing the show? I'm anxious about not doing the show. I want to go do it. Growing up in South Carolina, he was the youngest of 11 children quickly learning how to find his voice. You had to be loud. <laughs> yeah, you, had to, you had to grab that brass ring to get attention. But I also, I always, I always had an audience because my brothers and sisters were very nice to me. My mom made them listen to my stories. So I eventually learned how to tell one. Um, you learn to eat very fast if you have 11 brothers and sisters. <laughs> you can't ever feel that things are going to go right, you know? Mm -hmm. Chaos is normal, which is great for doing a late night show because you're always surfing the chaos, trying to do 200 right. shows a year. Right. He refined his voice and found a calling to comedy while attending Northwestern University. It was there that he discovered improv, laying the foundation for who he is today. Creating a new show uh, every night or doing an hour of improvisation every night because the show at Second City is scripted and then you improvise at the end of the night. Uh, is great training for being a talk show host uh -huh. because, you know, any conversation with somebody is an improvisation. Right. And it goes best when you don't have a plan, but you just react off what the other person's doing. Colbert also manages to stay grounded thanks to his Catholic faith. Religion played a big role in the Colbert house thanks to his parents. How does your faith sustain you? I think of uh, my faith as a gift that my, my father and my mother and everybody before them uh, gave me. When I look at my children uh, and I think, I want to be able to give them the best. And I have the same faith that my ancestors loved me in the same way. And so I accept it as a gift to be investigated and to be used, uh, not to be unquestioned. This serves me and makes uh, certain aspects of my life, uh, illuminates them in a beautiful way. He has also been inspiring a generation to think. His platform, commencement speeches, talking humor while getting a very important message across. In my experience, you will truly serve only what you love, because service is love made visible. I learned that from improvisation, that you know when you're improvising, the most important person on stage is the other person. Also very important is that you get a big TV show with your name and lights right. at the top. On the That's how you serve other people best. Get a big TV show, super famous. Everybody shut up while I'm talking. Ready to tackle the biggest challenge of his professional career, changing the face of late night here on CBS. Now, Stephen, you have Emmys, Peabody's. Grammys. And ice cream. Don't leave the Grammys out. I, okay, Grammys. Okay. Ice cream named after you. Yes. But America wants to know, can you whip and can you nay nay? Uh, I cannot nay nay. Uh, oh. Nor can I whip, but I would happily learn from you. <laughs> okay. Would you like to teach me? <laughs> okay. I, I'm at the foot of the master here. Oh, do we have some music? Okay, here's the whip. Whip. Nay nay. What's the name? This. Watch me nay nay. Watch me do it. Watch me do it. Watch me do it. 
All right, Steven! <laughs> That's it! I, I knew I you the, could! I have the hips for that. I know, you really got it. I have it. the lady hips. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's been a great interview. Oh, Steven.